Welcome to English Country Life and welcome to the chicken calendar. This month it's April, so let me take you through our plans to keep our chickens happy, healthy and of course follow through that chicken breeding cycle. Welcome, my name's Fiona and this is our series following our chickens month by month and this is the April episode. At the start of April here in the UK it's beautifully sunny although a little bit cold. Before we get into what we're doing in April let's have a quick recap in March because there was a lot going on. First thing we were doing last month was fertility testing our clock rolls and Mr White, I'm glad to say, fertility tested incredibly high. Of two tests, he scored over 95% in both and he is now called Thor and what a god he is and he's going forward as our breeding cock roll for this coming year. We were also in high alert for mites and we were looking out for red mite, northern fowl mite and for chicken lice because as the weather warms up those little pests become a bit more prevalent and I'm glad to say at the start of April we are pest free. We're also worming our chickens because we wanted them to be of their best health as we go into this breeding season. Because here in the small holding we breed Buff Orpingtons and we like to use the broody tendencies of the Buff Orpington hens. And when the, the hens brood they stay in the coop for long periods of time and don't eat a great deal. So they need to be as healthy as possible before they start that process. Now we're into April itself and the first thing you're going to notice is that the chickens still aren't free ranging. We still have them in their fully netted enclosure. We're still under avian influenza restrictions here in the UK and that means we've got a legal obligation to keep our chickens either indoors or in fully netted enclosures. We were hoping that those restrictions would be lifted by the 31st of March but that didn't prove to be the case and at the time of filming there is still no date published although they are talking about an exit strategy from the restrictions there's still no date published as yet so we don't know when those are going to be lifted. We're going to talk about that first but that also brings some other problems for us because the other thing we're looking out for during April are broody hens because our hens will start going broody during April, May and June. So we're going to be watching them very closely to make sure that we know which ones are broody, which ones aren't, which ones will settle, which ones won't. And given we're under avian influenza restrictions, we've got some key decisions to make if we do have broodies. And we do think we do have one, a little hen called Chocolate, but you'll see her during this film. And the last thing that we're doing is finalising all the repairs on the coops because there's a lot of them. But what we want to do is to show you the repairs that we've done on the wooden coops and actually what we're moving to because we're moving towards plastic coops now, 100% recycled plastic coops and we're favouring Nestera coops, previously green frog designs. But let's start with talking about the avian influenza restrictions which are still in place. So let's talk a little bit about the avian influenza restrictions here in the UK. At the start of April 2022, we are still under avian influenza housing restrictions. So that means we've got a legal requirement to keep our chickens either indoors or in fully nested enclosures. Now most of us were hoping on the 31st of March those restrictions would be lifted. But unfortunately, AFA and DEFRA took the difficult decision to continue the restrictions for the time being. So the recommendation was the restrictions should stay at least for March and then an exit strategy should be put in place. So I'm still hopeful they're going to be lifted but there's no date for that to happen and we don't know when it's going to happen. Yes the restrictions were lifted on the 31st of March in 2021 but if we go back to the spring of 2018 the restrictions weren't lifted. The housing restrictions I believe they were lifted on the 30th, 30th of April and all of the restrictions were removed in mid-May so it could be a little while yet. So we still need to ensure that our chickens are safe, that we're maintaining good biosecurity so that includes keeping them inside, keeping foot washes in place and making sure that access that other people have to our chickens who also keep chickens is actually restricted. <laughs> Let 
let me introduce you to chocolate. Chocolate is the very first of our broody hens of this coming breeding season. How do we know she's broody? Well, she's refusing to leave the nest and she's flat as a pancake. Now, most people think that broody hens don't actually move a great deal, but you'd be surprised how much they shuffle around, but they don't want to leave the nest. They will come out for short periods to eat, drink and to empty their bowels, but that's about all. Now, unfortunately, chocolate with her timing is going to give us a little bit of a dilemma, but let me explain why. So where do we go to from here, given we suspect that chocolate is broody? Well, the first thing we need to do is to confirm that she is broody. And what we'll do first is to watch her for a couple of days to see if she stays in position in the coop. And then what we'll try and do is we'll move her to her own coop with a run. So she's still fully housed and in that fully nested enclosure so that we are still compliant with the avian influenza restrictions. But it also means that she'll be out of this enclosure and other hens won't bother her. So her eggs are more likely to be safe. From there, we'll keep an eye on the risk assessments. And if she takes to that new coop, because sometimes broody hens, when you move them to their own coop, they can change their mind and actually break. So if she does continue to sit, we'll give her some eggs and then she'll have three weeks to incubate. That'll take us to the start of May. And that's when the chicks will hatch. Now I would hope that we're at a point where the avian influenza restrictions are lifted, but it all depends on the prevalence of the disease in the wild bird population and the captive bird population so there are no guarantees. Now beyond that we would actually keep the chicks and the broody hen normally in their coop and run for around 48 hours after hatch just so that the young chicks can find their feet before we let them out into the free range field. Now if we can't free range them it's not the end of the world if they stay in that run for around 10 days or so which would take us to the back end of May. So over time we are reducing the risk of when the chicks um, need to be out into a large area that they're not going to be in this fully enclosed run because for us, from experience, we know that a broody hen with chicks likes to stay on the periphery of a flock. Now, while this run is very large, it's 21 metres by 3 metres, it's probably not big enough for a broody hen and chicks to stay away and navigate round all of the hens and the rooster within this enclosure. So ideally, they need to be out in the free range area. But if chocolate is broody, we could potentially make it work, providing we believe that the restrictions are going to be lifted by mid to late May. But as I say, we need to keep an eye on the risk assessments published by DEFRA in the meantime, because nothing is certain and we don't actually know at this stage. So we're just gonna to have to assess things as we go along. But for now, we're going to make sure that chocolate really is broody and then install her in her own coop and make sure that she stays in that coop. And we'll just take it from there and take it as it comes. But come back for the May video and we'll update you what's happening. we use broody hens here on the small holding to incubate hatch and raise chicks for the new season we ideally need those broody hens to be installed in a coop each because that's the safest way to make sure their eggs aren't broken and the chicks are kept safe in the early stages of their life now that means that we've now got about 10 coops and every single one, or all the wooden ones anyway, need to be maintained. And during winter, we've got to the point now it's a bit of a race against time. And coming into April, we are trying to get the last of the coops ready. So let me explain. This is probably the worst coop that needed repair this winter. So this coop needed wood preservative, which all of the coops did, but it also needed a brand new floor because it had started to rot out. And we also needed to replace all of the ply lining inside this roof because that started to delaminate and also rot. So that was a big task. Worst of all though, the nest box that was on the side of this coop had to be removed. It'd been leaking all through the last summer season and we tried everything we could to stop it leaking, filling up the gaps, using silicon sealant, you name it, we tried it, nothing seemed to work, the water was still getting in. So we made the decision in the end to simply remove it and here is put this removable panel on and it's great for me because it means with these handles I can just lift it off for cleaning and I can easily also get in to see the broody hen and chicks inside when I need to. 
But wooden coops for us is something which we're wanting to actually move away from. So let me show you what we're moving to. And this is our new Nestera coupe. It's 100% recycled plastic. And why is that important? Well, unlike our wooden coops that we've just been looking at that we've had to repair significantly over this winter, there's no wood preservative required here. There's no repairs needed and it's got a 25 year warranty. Yes, it will cost more than a wooden coupe to begin with. However, over time, this coupe overall will cost you less to own than a wooden coupe. Now, if you're interested in all the features and how easy it is to construct there's a link to our review video up above and included in that video is a discount code for our subscribers to watch that and get a discount off this fantastic coop. During this breeding season we're going to be installing one of our broody hens and their chicks inside this coop and we're going to be watching them on an internal coop cam. So we're going to follow those chicks as they hatch and as they're raised by their broody hens so come back and watch us for that. Well, it's April in a nutshell with us and the chickens, and we've got some key decisions to be made this month. So come back in May for the May video and see how we're progressing with all of this and see how Chocolate's getting on if she's broody. If you have liked this content, take a moment and give us a thumbs up down below. If you're not already a subscriber, hit subscribe and the bell icon and you'll be notified of every new video as soon as it goes live. If you've got a question for us, leave it in the comment section and we'll do our best to get back to you as soon as possible. But for now, thanks for watching and we look forward to seeing you next time.